This is question number 38 in chapter 10 of the textbook. It reads, how fast does water flow from a hole at the bottom of a very wide 4.6 meter deep storage tank filled with water? Ignore viscosity. I've made a quick sketch of it here. We've got a huge storage tank. They've gone through uh, the length to even state that it's very wide. In other words, uh, the volume of this storage tank is very significant. The reason they need to say that is because we're going to be applying Torricelli's theorem here. And so therefore, we need to say that, uh, oops, as this, th as this happens, uh, the, uh, let's call this uh, point one, and we'll call this here uh, the hole where the water is leaking out of or emanating point two. We have to say that the velocity at point one is zero. Or in other words, the volume of that container is so large that as water leaks out of here at point two, uh, that the liquid level of the water isn't app changing appreciably. Let's go ahead and start by writing uh, Bernoulli's equation. So of course, Torricelli's theorem is derived from Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli's equation simply says that uh, the pressure plus 1 half rho v squared plus rho g h is a constant. So uh, I'll say that's at 1, and that's the velocity uh, at location 1. So therefore, at any other place in that fluid, uh, the sum of those three terms should be the same. So therefore, I can say is equal to the pressure at 2 plus 1 half rho v at 2 uh, squared plus rho g h at 2. OK, uh, now that we've written this, uh, let's recognize here that at point 1, the velocity of the fluid uh, is not changing. And so therefore, I can say that this term is 0 because v at 1 should be 0. Uh, I could also say that both points 1 and point 2 are at atmospheric pressure. Let's assume that the surface is open to the atmosphere. Therefore, the pressure at point 1 and the pressure at point 2 are equal to each other. We could call them 0. We could call them whatever we wanted to, uh, whether this was atmospheric or gauge pressure. And uh, they're both going to, since they're equal to each other, they'll drop out. I'll subtract the same thing from both sides. And I'm left with this expression. The velocity at point 2 uh, here, uh, this is kind of the term that has velocity in it. I'm going to leave that on the right-hand side and subtract this term from both sides. So I get rho g h at 1 minus rho g h at 2 is equal to 1 half rho v at 2 squared. Since this is the same fluid, the density of the fluid doesn't change between points 1 and points 2. So therefore, I can also eliminate uh, rho since it exists in each term. And I'll multiply both sides by 2. So I'm going to get 2 times g h at 1 minus g h at 2 is equal to the velocity of the fluid at point 2 squared. Let's go ahead and factor out a g. And I'm going to get 2g times h at 1 minus h at 2 is equal to v naught squared. And then, of course, I'll take the square root of both sides. So uh, the height at 1 is 4.6 higher than the height at 2. So when I substitute these numbers in, I'm going to get root 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared times the height at 1, which is 4.6 meters minus 0 meters, the height at 2. Again, this is relative, so I'm just calling uh, the height at 2, 0. And that's going to be uh, equal to my velocity, oops, at point 2. That's an, uh, an ugly 2, but it's a velocity at point 2. When I uh, run that through, uh, I should be getting, for problem number 38, about 9.5 meters per second. So my answer then is 9.5 meters per second is equal to the velocity at 2. And this is the solution to question number 38 in chapter 10.